Next question is from Fit Within. Do you see any value in experimenting with different popular diets purely to gain knowledge and personal experience? How would you go about doing this? Oh, just extremely valuable. Yeah, totally. Yeah. This is the best way to do it. If you want to learn, here's the thing that I that is really crazy. We most people have no idea. Uh, they're just so unaware of how food really affects them, partially because they eat the same stuff all the time. So it's hard to know until you cut things out and replace them, and then you become all of a sudden more aware. Like, whoa, I, you know, removing that and, and replacing with this, I feel so different. Or in my workouts, I have so much more stamina, or I have so much less stamina, or my sleep is better, or wow, my my gas or my acid reflux now is fixed, or whatever. You you have no idea until you have a bit of a contrast. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And doing this uh, helps you do that. So, for example, going keto, which is very, very low or no carbohydrates and high fat, it showed me that I just don't need as many carbohydrates as I think. Uh, I, I had great – I was okay. I felt good. Um, and what I noticed on keto that's distinct is I'm sharper uh, mentally. I also noticed that I do have less stamina. Carbohydrates do provide me with more stamina. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm working out. And so these are things you can notice with yourself by going through these diets. Now, the other part I want to say is you got to do it for a little while though. You don't just go keto or vegan or paleo or whatever for a few days. You got to give yourself a couple months of doing something before you really solidify what you're understanding about your body. So I, I used to do this without telling them that they're doing it right. So oh, with your clients, you mean? Yeah. So this was like a this. I I love to to weave in and out of all the different you know quote unquote diets, uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't tell a client that I wouldn't be like oh we're going vegan now or oh we're going keto now or we're going paleo now. I would just adjust their food, and I would run a a much higher protein or a much higher fat diet for a mm -hmm. while, and then we would reduce you know, meats. And then all of a sudden it would be like mostly veg. And so I would do that. And then I'd be asking them to report back to me and be like, how are you feeling? What do you notice? Yeah. And then try and make them aware of that versus, I mean, God, this weekend I was with, uh, you know, my niece and her boyfriend were at Max's birthday. And, you know, she's like, oh man, she goes, have you seen Game Changers yet? Oh, <laughs> like, no. oh no. Right, right. <laughs> so she tells me that they're going to go vegan right now. And I and I, I go, you know, why don't you guys call me before you just all of a sudden go grocery shopping and decide because you watch a, one documentary that you're going to change? I was like, first of all, I said, I know you're eating because I've coached her before. I know your eating habits. I know what you love to eat. Like you absolutely love meats in your, in your diet. So why would you completely eliminate it? Now, I'm totally for you eliminating some of the things that you probably don't need in there as regular as you probably were eating before, like the bacons every morning and butters. And, you know, if you're eating red meat all the time, why don't you go to like, you know, reduce down to chicken and fish and mm -hmm. see how you feel and then go run a vegan ish type of diet, but allow chicken because she's she's not doing it for animal rights. Like I said, if you're doing it for those reasons, she's like, I don't give a shit about that. Yeah. I'm like, OK, if you don't give a shit about that, you enjoy meat. Why would you all of a sudden go from somebody who eats it all the time to completely eliminating? Why don't you eliminate the ones that you think are potential offenders in your diet and eat like maybe leaner cuts or less frequently eat it and pay attention to how you feel and run maybe a higher vet. You're not getting enough vegetables and greens. Maybe go that direction and look at it more like that versus going like eating one way and saying, oh, I watched this documentary. Now I'm going to eat a complete other way mm -hmm. and not really paying attention to what is your body telling you when you eat these foods and when you don't eat these foods. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's 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 a really, really good way to become aware of how foods affect your body, of how your current diet was affecting you. Because, again, mm -hmm. most people are just they have no idea. And so when they make some changes, all of a sudden things become more uh, more apparent to them. I love this. I absolutely love this. And here's another reason why I love it. Because for whatever reason, I, I know why, okay, our, our diets are much more to us than just food. I, I know that's, you know, if you break it down, it's just food. But really, it's much more than that, right? Food, this is why when you talk about diets with people, it gets almost like you're talking about politics or religion. Oh, yeah. In the fitness space, if you want to get into... Like, you know, right now we're in election season and you say anything that's anything that's politically, you know, motivated, any type of political comment, you're going to get fire for one side and it gets all crazy. And so people are like, I don't even want to talk politics. Sometimes you get this religion in the fitness space. Uh, you do this with nutrition. You talk to fitness people, mm -hmm. you start talking diet. I swear to God, you will get into fights and arguments with them as if you were t if you were talking to. Yeah. You There's know, no about. one size fits all. Yes. And this is the the message that people forget 
all the time because in their world, this works so well. Yeah. And and it just gets promoted, uh, you know, and, and this is what you hear from your relatives, this is what you hear on the news, you hear on like a, a documentary that's trying to, you know, really pull people in their direction. And this is this is all monetarily driven. Uh, they they have a reason why they're doing that. They're they're marketing it to you like that because they want you to buy certain products. They want you to buy their method, their book, their plan, whatever it is. It is totally a good idea for you to go through these yourself and educate yourself. Uh, and, and this is this is my experience with fasting. Uh, you know, which is another sort of a method on its own, uh, which just helped me to understand my own habits and, and look more from an outside perspective of uh, why I'm so needy at certain times of the day for nutrients or, or, you know, what my patterns tend to be with. I go here because I just get this thing and it's uh, and, and it makes me feel this this thing like I feel great, like having coffee and having this muffin or whatever it was. Uh, and, and I can eliminate that and I can feel even better by doing this instead. And so I just think that, uh, you know, putting the ball back in your own court and, and really understanding it yourself is everything. That's what I mean. You're, you literally break. That's because nutrition or food is such a big part of us that you learn to break the chains to this, you know, to your food. And I don't mean break the chains like you're never going to eat again. I mean. Again, as it, people treat it like it's a religion or like it's politics. And going from one diet to another, with with by the way, this has to be with healthy intent. Now, if you're going from diet to diet, which one's going to make me lose the most weight and you become obsessed about it? This can also become, uh, you know, a, a, an eating disorder. But if you do it with the intent of really listening to your body, see how you feel, you'll break those chains. You won't you won't get stuck in that that nutritional you know zealotry that a lot of us get stuck in. And you'll feel flexible. You'll feel like, okay, well, you know, I got this this presentation to make. And I notice when I eat keto, I'm a little sharper mentally. Or, you know, I'm going to go kayaking with my friends. Right. Uh, I notice when I eat a little higher carbohydrate. You know what's best feel, for whatever situation. Yeah, or I'm feeling down or my digestion is off. I know how to adjust my nutrition accordingly. Because, again, we're so tied. It's so funny. Like when I talk to my parents about nutrition, just to give an example of how tied people are to their food. If I even make the recommendation, if I even hint – that they should probably reduce or cut pasta out of their diet. Just for just see what happens. You know? I tell my whoa, just, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa. just cut pasta out. Remember, my parents are, are Italian immigrants. When I say cut pasta out just to see how you feel. It's like cut off a leg. It's almost like I said, hey, listen, why don't you like cut, kill one of your children just to see what it feels like? That's, what it, that's the response I get, right? It's because we're so tied to our food. Moving from one to another in this way it helps you helps you break that. Well, not only that, I you know this is what I was telling my niece too is like the likelihood that you and your boyfriend are supposed to be eating the exact same thing is so unlikely. Yeah, yeah. You know, so consider that too because so many people do these diets and then they put the whole family on it or the their spouse or whatever has to do. Have it you with seen them. people put their pets on vegan diets? <laughs> yes, like oh, cats they, and dogs. They die. It's not, yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like maybe this whatever diet you maybe you found one that works really well for you, but to think that because it works well for you that it's also going to work well for your partner is ridiculous. We're, we're that's how individual all of us are and how unique it is. So. Instead of attaching yourself to, you know, the religion of the diet, you know, try to unpack what is it about this diet that is making you feel so good? And what was it about what you were doing before that was making you feel so bad? And maybe it's, a f it, and not maybe, for sure, it's a few things. That it's a you, piece of something. Yes. Yeah. It's, there's a few things that you probably eliminated when you followed this new diet X you know, that is making you feel so good and be where it's less about, oh, being so reg regimen about th this diet, these diet rules. And it's more about, oh, wow, when I cut out having, you know, butter and bacon, I do feel 10 times better. Okay. So you don't need to go full vegan. Just cut out the butter and the bacon mm -hmm. and eat normal. Or when you notice when you eat red meat two times a day, every single day, you feel terrible. So rotate your meat, maybe have some fish and some chicken and some turkey and some other things mm -hmm. in there instead. Of, so look at those things when you follow these, these these diets a made up thing. It's yeah. completely made up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It was just food before. Right. Yeah, and I'll end on this part with this. Uh, within reason. I know we're saying try a bunch of different diets. Oh, that right. doesn't mean try every. Yeah, the yeah. cabbage yeah. diet, <laughs> the pizza diet. There's a lot of crazy shit out yeah, there. Yeah. So you could skip those. Yeah, use a little common sense. <laughs>